Hey guys, Sunstreak was here and welcome back to another of our video in the series of best bots in the game for 2022. And yes, this time we are doing air class bots. I've got my good friend Tex here with me again. Thank you for coming on again, Tex. Hey, what? Hey, was thanks for having me again. So we've already done special class. We've already done gunners. We've already done warriors. We're now doing air class. We've got healers on the go going soon. We've got triple changers. Hey. You know, like I said in the past videos, we can go anywhere with this. Uh, everyone seems to like these videos. A lot of good feedback. So, uh, yeah, we're going to continue doing these. And uh, we're going to start today with uh, Air Class. So, let's chit-chat. Let's get straight into it. So, uh, we've had a bit of feedback asking us to put the cons more in. Which is fair enough. You know, we do sort of neglect them a bit as being bot players. <laughs> so, uh, Viper. So, what do we think of Viper? Uh, I think it's interesting. Because uh, I said... We when you look at the matchups, right? Like a Viper doesn't really have that matchup that every other converse bot has. And it's a bit of a discussion point, but uh, you know, it's a bit of a mix of power glide versus skydive, right? Like yeah. it's an odd, odd, odd concoction. Yeah. I think, uh, I'll also come to storm clash in a minute, but I think my main concern is that, uh, personally, I think Viper is here here is quite poor um where would you rate him situational not great um only situational because yeah. it's, you're trying to line up a, a things in a row and i think the way that we're making defenses these days we you know we're trying to avoid straight lines symmetrical bases so if you don't have a, a one-shot bot or you know you're trying to line up a, a, a wall path or a, you know power glide viper makes it very hard to get the full damage factor of his yeah. stats and and if you can't hit all of it well you know there's no point really using him really yeah we've well, had a bit of feedback as well about putting bots in the lines people said it's cheating so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put him on the lower end of the situation i think uh, <laughs> but it's, it's the point i'm making so, though so storm clash where would you rate storm clash so i actually in the good section because yeah, for the people that the, the people People that didn't really have, um, say, a five-star Silver Bolt, Firefly, all that, as a four-star bot, Storm Clash probably has some of the best stats as a overall damage, yeah. uh, you know, one-shot flyer. And decent range, same cost. Yeah, I think uh, just overall solid flyer. I think the point is that as a four-star, I think Storm Clash does have the most damage out of all the air-class jets. Uh, not as in pretty singular, sure. but obviously the burn that she has afterwards. Uh but the point is that we have this bot that's actually pretty good and the cons don't. And I think that sometimes mm. they argue that the cons are, you know, uh, left behind a bit and forgotten about. And obviously this is age old, This these two bots. They're not new bots. But uh, this is a problem at the start of the game where they sort of had two abilities that were different and they've standardized them yeah. now. Uh, and I'm glad about that. But um, yeah. Yeah. I, I do remember that the Space 8 went through and did a bit of a, you know, balance of some older mismatches and that's great so hopefully we just don't have to go back anymore that's all yeah true okay next two bots we have jetfire and starscream so oh, I, I have staples uh, yeah i have jetfire in my uh war team here and there i mean obviously the uh the pl hard mode buffs have made him a bit less relevant than what he was it was a staple in my team on every single uh attack to the point where um i'd probably put him in the godly section back then but I think, personally, around good, to think? No, I agree. I think, he, honestly, overall, in terms of damage and like what you want from a, a flyer, it's exactly what you get from Jetfire. And, uh, you know, a lot of people jumped on the four-star, uh, sorry, on the five-star version, and still use him, not disappointed. They're getting all that they want and, you know, putting the, the combats on them that make them into a gunner. Really, it's exactly what you want, long-range Good DPS, you know, yeah. okay health, but that one shot long range capability, that's perfect. Yeah, I think in the likes of Cyber, especially, uh, the fact where the PL, uh, well, the hard mode buffs are not as high, you can still one shot the MDS, and that's huge for me if you can one shot the MDS, and that's probably what made him go into the good from Godly, is when they made that sort of turning point to stop where one shots can't one shot the MDS anymore. Um, yeah. I think I, I think uh, it's not a coincidence that the uh, air class special ability perk is in tier nine or ten of the the tech tree. I, I don't think that's a coincidence either. Yeah, true, true. Uh, 
And the next ones we've got is Silverbolt and Thundercracker. So this is a bit Ooh. of an interesting topic. These are my favourite. Or... So where would you put these guys? It is. Oh, <laughs> well, for me, he would have been normally sitting in Godly just because of previously uh, costing the longest range, highest damage. Um, yeah, I, I think it's. I used to spam him so badly yeah. before I'd even leave the pad. You know, I take out, took out every missile launcher, took out every beam laser, just as him solo, and then I would start to walk a base because they were the yeah. most, I know, for me, crucial weapons. But then that was HQ sixteen, right? Then seventeen, seventeen five came along. The MDS stun immunity. Yeah. And it's like, oh, silver bolts. You know, not so good. I'm like, well, yes and no. But because of that, and because of how important the MDS has become, I bring him down to good. Um, but still to this day, I have a, a max four star, 65 10. And on my actual war team is the five star, 65 10. Because it's just so versatile with the range. You're not always, you know, I'll take out the missile launchers from far away, but, you know, I'll use it to, um, uh, stunner and op. I know we talked in the last video about how smoke smoke screen was a, a very defensive bot to keep in mind. Well, I use silver bolt on smoke screen, uh, lop, uh, chromia, because they're the ones that can really hurt me or slow me yeah. down. Whereas silver bolt's kind of cheap. I can pretty much anywhere on the map call upon him, and that's why I just think he's so versatile out of all the bots. You know, I don't, I don't need him to do the full max damage. That's why I have uh, Quintus on my Silver Bolt to, Advice. you know, protect yeah. him. Uh, you know, um, I know a lot of people use that core elsewhere, but in terms of just, I like to keep my jet alive. You know, he still has flak or top shot or whatever, but it's, um, yeah, for me, my go-to jet is always going to be Silver Bolt because I'm not looking to take out an MDS or I can't now in Prime League anyways, but... I just I don't need I don't need that I don't need that all round I need specific jets for my style of play and I think still bolts for for me. Yeah, I just worry that obviously this talk of the uh, EMP billbot cores being buffed and you know you've already got the uh, the healing cores that affect still bolt. So it's interesting to see where it'd go in the meta because he's already dropped down, will drop down further. But that's to be said, and like I said, we could maybe look at these again in 2023 and see how things have changed. And um, yeah, yeah, and uh, it'd be interesting to see where it goes. Uh, and next we have uh, Skydive and Skywarp. Mm. So all these guys are only in a four star. Um, I think second behind Silbo or more damage than Silbo. Oh, they're balls, but very high damage. So uh, they're very, been... very expensive. Yeah, they don't been quite in the meta. I I, seen... I found that I've been using Skydive when the HQ increase comes, and my jets can't one shot because he can, and then very quickly I stop using it again when there's a uh, box that can one shot. Um, so where would you write uh, rate them for um, Skydive? Just not great. Um, the, like it's just uh, too expensive. It's a slow burn, and the range is not as good. Um, you know, I used to use him with Skylinks when we were doing the uh, air show attacks yes. in HQ sixteen yeah. days, because because of that high damage, right? Like, so I had two runs of skydive and two runs of of Skylinks, and the HQ is gone. But now, you know, with all the the HQ protection. Um, Skydiver's just seen himself out the door because of costing. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, maybe a cost reduction is maybe in order to help him out, maybe. But it does do a lot of damage. It's, it's a, as a five star. What do you think, Nerdo? Would he mm, warrant that that sort no. of cost because of a five star? Be able to one shot maybe, the MDS, but, maybe. Uh, you know, it would be the only jet that could one shot an MDS without obviously well, a healing I core. So. I don't know if you if you saw the stats that I put up the the last few days when it came to uh, talking about MDS protection and shield generators and stuff. Yeah. It's quite co quite concerning if you're trying to <laughs> uh, one shot something that's under the perks and a shield generator and and whatnot. So I think the people who are thinking of the future of like when either of these jets become five stars and you know maybe just trying to pick off a MDS, I, I'll be honest, it's not going to happen. Um, you would have to honestly give Skydive, you know, 20,000 damage-ish. 
Uh, interesting one here. <laughs> so we've got uh, Slipstream and Air Raid. Now, I'll be honest with you, a um, bit of a history about this. So uh, the first time I've actually even heard of you or knew of you was, um, I think I was in one of the one of our chats, the uh, the TF chats, and someone said, yeah, Air Raid's amazing. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, Air Raid's one of the worst bots in the game. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, it's this guy Tex that uses him a lot in Prime League. I'm like, no, he doesn't. Not a chance. This guy hasn't got a clue what he's talking about. Yeah. And then someone showed me a replay. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, wow. And it made me sit up and think, this bot's actually pretty good. And that's yeah. what sort of well made me come around to Every bot has got a use if you know how to use it. And I think use it on the build bot, I don't know if it's your idea or not. Maybe give props to someone else, I don't know. But I thought it was genius. No, honestly, I, like I, I was like, that is genius. Yeah, I mean, you know, it really does fall into that that thought that not everyone pops out straight away, um, whether it be a star level or, you know, the stats don't. You know, you need a trigger bot. People are concerned yeah. about combos, timings. But seriously, like this guy, you know, I've been I've been ragging Dale to give me a five star version of this guy because I just I, I love him. Just you know, right now he, he caps out at around sixty five, sixty six hundred damage, which is it's okay, but it's what you combo him with, you know. Yeah. We did we did the the gunner video last, and I put this guy with Hound, and I know you love Hound, but the thing is. Between air raid and a hound, I can essentially kind of one shot an MDS, which is kind of scary, you know. Like it's, but when 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 we first started using him, yeah, it was soft targets. It was a, a level one build bot. It had 50 health. I was like, you destroy that with a creme. It was so good, you know. You, <laughs> yeah. Because it, it was about it, it's you know it. This is this is how you play, right? You got to play with what you're given, you know, yeah. like. Um, the defenses only have 50 health. Why would I waste um, some bots SA? Like I was originally with Silverbot. Why would I waste even three points when I could just use a Krem yeah. and just use Air Raid, you know? Um, the best ones were Chain Reactions or Daisy Chains. I'd lay a couple Air Raids and trigger with a Krem. It's just smart. It was so, so satisfying yeah. seeing a whole base blow up, you know? Over the years, uh, that evolved to using a leader. Um, said using um, a silver bolt, using another jet, um, all the way through to using hound or even sea spray. Using warpath, put it in that path, and it just adds adds six thousand six hundred yeah. damage. That's a lot when you combine it with the trigger bots damage that it's doing. So, yeah, I, I got high hopes for this guy. I really can't wait for a five star if they um. He was my first SA11, by the way. So, so yeah. where would you rate this then? <laughs> Unfortunately, on a rating, it'd be in the the good to situational because you do need really? a clump. Yeah, look, you, you need that. You need that clumped. You know, the bases now. Even like it's there's plenty of soft targets out there still, like a level two uh, build bot. You know, the research lab. Uh, you know, the space bridge and the ore harvester. You know, so there's soft targets, but you know, a good base design won't just put those soft targets in the middle and allow, you know, they shouldn't allow, you know, to you to uh, to run through with air, air raid. But um, yeah, I he's, he's definitely not godly, but and he's definitely not at the top end of the good, just the lower end of good borderline situational for me because yeah i think he's a massive advocate for lower players this is again how there's four stars yes. out there that can be used for higher play levels mm -hmm. so but as a five star would you rate him as godly then as a five star will the five star change his position would he still be good though as a five star i player? think it, i i think the pace to see where uh, depends on how we go with the health on uh weapons or if new things come out but the five, the five star, you know, like I said, it should be doing eight and a half thousand yeah, based 20%, on the, yeah. you know, um, so that that's a lot. So it's just how do how do you follow that up? How do you trigger him? It's up to you, and um, how useful he becomes. You know, I'll find a way. Trust me. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. But he, yeah, he he just he he'll stay in good. I don't I don't see him going up or down. Okay. Uh, and next we've got Brainstorm and Guy Hawks. So obviously, this guy was just, uh, released as a five-star recently, and 
for me, one of the better bots in the batch. So, um, yeah, I've not got Brainstorm as a four-star, but in testing, I use him slightly different. Uh, I say that quite a bit because I like to be a bit innovative on how I use these mm -hmm. bots. And a bit sort of similar to what you just said now, what you said about Air Raid, uh, using no ability points uh, to take mm -hmm. out an area. So using a Krem Zeke and things like that. So I use Brainstorm in a similar way. He's quite expensive. And people He's were very, putting Brainstorm yeah. down, taking a target out, causing the explosion. But what I was doing in the clustered bases was dropping him on the launch pad and straight away just putting Brainstorm or Guyhawk right in front of your team. They destroy it with DPS, cause the mm. explosion. Outpost bots, use them on an outpost bot. Once it's killed, it slows them down, less damage. Yeah. Once he's killed, does huge damage in an area. So it's little things mm. like this. I was trying to reduce his cost down. So these expensive bots, thinking of ways to reduce the cost yeah i mean look that's my only issue i i totally i so there's two ways to use him like you said you know you can either use him as that slow down factor on a walk team or use him like an air raid kind of uh yeah. to to get ahead and clear sections you know the, the only trouble for both of those strategies is it just comes down to cost, you know, expensive. Like, I, I wouldn't want to be using Brainstorm more than twice because it's just honestly very stupidly priced. I kind of get, now that the five-star comes out and you're talking 95% reduction of speed, like pretty much nothing. So what it hits, yeah. it's still nothing, nothing to your team, yeah, in, in, a, in a little small area, which is, which is great. So I think... From the the five star perspective, it's probably better to use him on the walking side of things for your team to just walk into, yeah. instead of trying to trigger it ahead of you, and it becomes very expensive. I think it's a it's a great slowdown effect, and uh, yeah, if you ever get in a bind uh, into a kill zone, a great sort of it can save you a lot. I think for sure. So what do you think? Do you think? I don't think it's godly. I think good situational. I think on the high end of good. Um, yeah, okay. And, and, it's, and, and uh, if he was at a reduced cost, he would be in godly. Simple as that. Yeah, I'd probably agree. Um, I, I think he's well balanced, personally, where you can't spam him. There's the problem no. with Sea Spray, that Sea Spray is probably a bit under cost, um, like Blades was, and hence why I need to counter. But I think this guy could be you know, a bit of a you know a golden nugget in there, in that batch. Um, I think it'll be really good. In the current meta, I'm not too sure. People are creating a lot of spaced out bases and his yeah. area of effects not great. And that's why I was thinking maybe down here, but I can see value in a minute. If the meta changes, then obviously it'd be borderline, uh, you know, good to godly. If it's a clustered base, uh, not so clustered bases, then down here. So I think, you know, the higher end of good is probably about right for him. Um, but it'd be interesting to yeah, see I mean, the meta like, changes. I mean... Well, I mean, as I said, we've seen a bit of a spike in the massive front-loaded clustered bases yeah. where everything's just hitting you at the start. And to be honest, you come across such a base, this guy is what you want to enter yeah. a layer. Um, and, yeah, uh, just uh, a front-loaded base or a kill zone, and this guy's perfect. So it's not it's not even situational, you know, because you're going to come across those bases a lot. Um and I don't think the map's going to get bigger. I don't ever think it will. So, you know, you're only asking if things get put more into a map. or well, it's only going to get naturally clustered. So, True. Yeah, True. yeah. Not a bad pull if you get him. True. Uh, next, we've got uh, Swoop and Scourge. This is the first guy I actually... I think the first guy I took to ability Max. 10. Yeah, not quite, it's not even Max oh, yeah. now. So if, uh, um, he fell away from the meta quite a bit, but in my old cleanup crews and things, I use him quite a bit. Um, but I don't want the five star, which is a bit strange to me. You know, oh, you that, don't? No, I'm not a big fan of the five star bot. Um, I just think quite I definitely low health. I chased him. Well, quite low health. Outpost, think... amazing. Uh, quite low health. Yeah. I think his ability is too slow um, in doing damage. So as a cleanup bot, he's great. But I just find, again, we talked about combos and we talked about cost. And I find that his first use is great. Second use tends to get quite expensive, especially if you're comboing and trying to clean up with it. And it's getting that amount of damage in. I think it's a bit uh, inconsistent on where he's going to hit as well. You've got a good idea, but sometimes I think, yeah, I've got to put on that target there. And it doesn't hit a certain target. It does more damage to the other targets, but you wanted to hit a specific target. And for these sort of reasons, personally... 
I think it's around here. I really do. I mean, I know a lot of yeah, people def- talk up here def- maybe for. Definitely. I don't know. Do you agree? Disagree? I think uh, I, I've got a couple of views because obviously the way that I, you know, he was the first bot that I maxed as a four star because he was a power level yeah. champion, right? Yeah. For that for that zone fourteen, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it it just really started to decline rapidly when zone 15 came in and they buffed anti-air cores because he's hanging up there for the longest of all jets he's just a sitting duck so that's what people don't like about him but he's actually the highest dps bot in the whole game right so the sa11 has brought him back so yes it's mainly i only use him for defense and i chase defense bots at the moment so i value him a lot higher on the usefulness of him um you know you, you only got eight bots on your war team but you know you got to think there's many different uh defense options because a, a layout will change but what i like about on the defense is that you know when someone was sacking on your base or whatever um he would hold his damage until the bots would come out or the combiner would come out so it wasn't wasted and you know, when I threw up the stats the other night in playtest, it was like, this guy does 22,000 damage. I get that it's in, you know, area on attack, but on defense, that is a lot of damage to be honed in, honed in on your bots. And because of the kind of circleness, he might clip a healer, clip a gunner, and then there's like one or two hits and they're dead. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I thought yeah. I want impactor, and I thought if I pull swoop, I won't be disappointed. It won't be throw your phone at the wall, sort of no. quit this game. Definitely not. Um, but again, I st- I've got from that batch every other bot, and I still want impactor over swoop. Swoop was the one to avoid for me, and I, yeah, as an outpost bot, absolutely amazing. Uh, top ten outpost bots without a doubt. And uh, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be against putting him in the lower end of good. Our situation which one do you think I th- I, i've got lower end of good because yeah. he just he ticks a, a lot of the boxes that i require yeah. from a, a bot right because that's he can be attack he's just not as useful on attack um but said you know from from helping your power level to he can attack he, he can be defense um yeah i just overall like as a himself by himself Nah, it's it's good. High. It's a lot of damage. Just if you manage him well, yeah. I I don't think you're ever going to be disappointed to pull pull this guy. Uh, next up, Cybertron Jetfire and Cybertron Starscream. Uh. So <laughs> I'm not a big fan of raids personally. We talked about this previously, uh, privately, and I'm not a big fan of these bots at all. And I think that if they were to be good at raids, they needed to do ridiculous damage against Cybertron buildings. And yeah. when it came out, I started to think, oh, maybe we're going to see Cybertron bases. And that will be quite, you know, Handy. Be quite decent. You know, having that sort of bot in your team as a Cybertron base. But we've never seen that. So in testing, no. I was like, oh, maybe we need to be a bit cautious about this. Because if it is in wars, it could be overpowered to hell. Um but against Cybertron base in raids, it doesn't do much. I mean, you probably do raids more than I do. What do you think? I do, that? but I don't. I don't. Don't use this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Very. That's it. All then. So where do you yeah. think? Uh, not great. Just it's not. Yeah. It's not very helpful to the to the game. Like I, I get it. It's it's a character design for a game mode that, essentially, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Just I don't even know anyone that anyone who does well at midweek raids are not using this guy i'd be interested to know so yeah if you're watching this and you use cybertron jetfire or cybertron starscream let me know yeah. in the comments i'd be interested to know if anyone uses him i've not seen him in wars ever i don't really compete nope. in raids that much so i'd be interested to know so um yeah let me know in the comments if you do use him because uh, is it but are they using him because they've got no one else I've used it because yeah. he actually has a use. I'd be interested to, uh, to have that conversation with people about it. But um, yeah, not a big fan. Uh, and next we've got uh, this guy. I can't even pronounce his name. Silverbolt. Beast Wars Silverbolt. Yeah, I can pronounce that, obviously. And, uh, oh, Cicada Con? <laughs> kick, kick it again. Kick it again. 
<laughs> I always got this kick in the car and I can't pronounce it. Uh, but yeah, this guy and Beast Wars Silver Bullet. So uh, what do you think of this guy? I mean, I was quite impressed in testing. Uh, the ability, when, when the, like, you know, I, I know we were huge, yourself was uh, a big advocate for new abilities, right? Instead of just yeah. uh, rehashing uh, a yeah. build of new bots. This was a, a new ability from, from scratch. And I was like, this, it looks visually good. And yeah. um, it was just a matter of, of, did it do the damage that you kind of hoped, you know, like he's hanging up there like swoop, you know, and then there's that kind of healing damage kind of thing. So it's, um, it's unique, yeah. but I don't see him as a war bot. If that, you know, see, it, I thought in lower levels, he would be absolutely up here, godly at lower levels, like Cybertron and below. The damage he did was crazy to one target and then a massive sort of AoE. I thought it was absolutely amazing at lower levels when I tried him in lower zones. So for, you know, so the yeah. power level and things like that, how unique he was, then yeah, but he's not getting in my war team as a five star i don't know i'm a bit on the bench but i'd personally put him around here lower you think yeah i mean well yeah i was the high end of situational i mean it's what do you what are you using him for like you know what i mean like it's i'm not i think it depends on you you know your outlook it's easy for us maybe as pl hard mode players to go yeah he's quite off i mean jetfire for example for us maybe good but in Cybertron might be godly because he can take out the MDS. I think this guy is similar in that sense that at our level, he doesn't quite do the damage needed. But at lower levels, I think he could even be up here in the likes of Gold League. And and so, I don't know. I'm more inclined to be... I don't know. But, that, but that's... you know, Well, you know, you know, you, you start having that conversation too. You, you, know, you might as well put Silverbolt back into Godly because he can just one-shot a HQ. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, good like, point. <laughs> You know, so look, I, I get it. I, I get that we're trying to give out honest feedback, but I yeah. think it, you know, this we're talking the cyber prime space about bots because we kind of want to give you that advice of what do you want to invest in, what's good for as you progress. You know, I don't, I don't think players want to stay in junk league, gold league, platinum. Like they, they want to progress into the cybers and the prime league eventually. Okay, so, so it's like, if you were a yeah. new player. And you could invest in either Jetfire or Beast Wars Silver Bolt and Kick It Come. Um, which one would you invest in from the get go? If you had no five stars, you're a new player, got both of them in four stars, you pulled them today. Personally, I'd I'd go into Beast Wars Silver Bolt more than Jetfire as a four star. Oh. That's what I'm I quite wouldn't. making. <laughs> See, I would. All right, so just pulled up the Silver Bolt stats and, you know, a 6510. We're looking at 5,905 damage over six seconds and healing your squad for 159 over per second. And if the target's health drops below 20%, the feathers spread to nearby, causing 33% of the above damage. So, you know, as, as, it's, it's, it's a lot to take in, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, you, you kind of got three things going on there. You know, you got that immediate damage you got a bit of healing and then if it does like if i don't know you got like this sub effect and i don't know i'm just i'm not sold on this bot it looks it looks fancy on paper and it just doesn't deliver for for my view i think but at the lower level bots that are in this kind of class or stats they're going to do obviously a lot better in the lower leagues yeah. Because it, that there's less challenges on defenses, so it looks more overpowering. The trouble is when you when you bring this bot who you've worked and you know, he, he killed it in the lower leagues. Next minute, that first day in cyber, you're like, oh, he he didn't go so well, and it's like, yeah, he's not built for the upper <laughs> upper leagues of war. You just jogged my memory now on why I liked it at lower levels or not. So most defenses at lower levels are around six k. So this guy yeah. was one shot in the defenses and then causing damage in an area and then healing yeah. your bots. But mm -hmm. because at higher levels, the defense have a lot higher HP, he was hitting a target and not doing much. And mm -hmm. that's why at lower levels, he was amazing. It was a one shot bot that did damage in an area as well and healed your squad. Whereas in at higher levels, 
it did a bit of damage. I needed comboing. This is a new one for the channel. I'm going to actually override it, I think, and put him up there, I think. I think that ah, you just sort of said, like, you know, is you know, in terms of he's good in Zen farming, he's good at power leveling because of low levels, he's good yeah. for lower league players. So, yeah, I'd say I'd just make a sort of like a, a a disclaimer that if you're Prime League hard, then you're looking around here, maybe. If you're anything lower than Cybertron below, then, yeah, I'd even put him up there, Cybertron below. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be disappointed invested in him. I would be disappointed if I got him and pulled him. Um, but uh, maybe not Prime League hard mode worthy. But definitely for low level players, definitely a bot you should consider. And next up, we've got Blades and Dirge. A bit of a sauce, you know, sauce bot for some people. Mm. Obviously, this was, you know, the most overpowered bot in the game come, what, six to nine months ago? Yeah. Ridiculously overpowered. You know, you're talking, you know, this guy would be up here somewhere. You know, yep. in the rafters, crazily good. Um, then obviously we had the uh, anti hack cores that were shelved at one point, and then we realised that they needed to come bring them back in testing. So uh, where would you rate him now then? He's After still the, uh, anti hack cores. I mean, you know, we we have this ongoing discussion of blades versus perceptor, but they're both still yeah. great bots. They're good. They just take the core away. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, again, we have this discussion that people are like, I don't like it that I can't use blades anymore. And our simple reaction, both of us were in agreement with this, is take the build bot out then. Yeah. Take the build bot out. There you go. Carry on regardless, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but people sort of, you know, it's, it's, it does increase your costs because you're using other abilities to do it. So I kind of get that. But it's all about strategy. It's all about, you know, trying to get out for the cheapest amount of ability points. Maybe using smoke screen or maybe using a jet or yeah. using something with a creme zig. You know, think outside the box a bit. And that's why I like this so much, these sort of counters. And, you know, let's be honest, if you really that, I mean, okay, it's more designed for us. But if you really don't like these, use a different bot. Drop yeah. him then, if you're really that sort of thing. I get people invested in him, but the point I'm making is that if you have invested in this bot, he's still war worthy. Absolutely. He's still good. It's just not that you can spam him. Do you, you, do know, you remember all these um, bots around here? Do you remember you know. one of those Prime League effects where the if, if a building was exploding around, it would do that AOE damage? And it was kind of like an effect that was designed for Blades where. He just created this chain reaction, and I think people got a, a bit uh, suckered in to be like, oh, that's how he should be. Just hack everything, and then everything just disappears. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, because, you know, with the costing of this bot, which is well balanced, um, you know, you can use him four or five times in the battle. So that's a lot of times um, you can hack, you know. So, yeah, man, just get rid of the build bot, eh? Like, it's not going to, it's not the end of the world. Just use your brain and have your. Have your blades on your team. I, I know there's just nothing wrong with him. So you agree, higher end of good still? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he um, yeah, I, I don't think he was ever godly because I think um, you're still only hacking a few things, right? Like his his bomb damage is only like maxing out at like fifteen hundred or something. So you're only hacking for you know ten seconds or whatever. But it's not like at the end of the day you could just hack an entire base. And then you know you still got to walk it. You know it's still time consuming, so he's not a he's not a god bot, but he's a very good bot. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and the next one we've got is a uh, Jetfire Sky Striker and uh, Night Raven. So where would you place these guys? So I'm a bit, I was a bit when these guys are testing. I was, again, it was unique that they go, you know, uh, they go invisible. I was like, yeah, yeah I like that. Uh, protect like against the uh, you know anti airs. Where would you place these guys? Where do you think? Um, I've got him on the lower end of good. I think because he has I said it was a different ability. It was a GI GI Joe era. You know, everyone. Some people didn't like him, um, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I mean, at the end of the day, you're invisible to really your only defense that can really hurt you. So how is that not good, right? So you know to kind of balance that you're doing a little bit less damage, which I totally understand, right? That's because if you had, you know, this guy doing, you know, 7,000 damage and he can't be hit by anything in the air, it's kind of immune to everything. It's kind of a bit, bit too much, you I'm know? I'm a bit, I'm not, I, I would personally put him down here. And for that reason, maybe even down here. And for that reason, personally, is I think how many people really use anti-air in the current meta? Mm. Not many people. So, 
let's take that visibility away that it doesn't get that much benefit really in the current meta anyway and then it does less damage than Jetfire. Yep. So Jetfire was one of the original bots in the game. He's been out for six years. Yep. And this guy does less damage. So why would you put him in your team ahead of Jetfire? No, you wouldn't. No, ever. you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have this guy ahead of Stormclash if I had a choice between the two. No. And Stormclash is good. Stormclash has the highest damage of all the um air class bots, so I don't know. Personally, I'm thinking down here, maybe higher end of situational. Because if there is, if there's air defenses, then yeah, this guy is supreme. If there's not, what advantage do you get? Well, I think I think a lot of people had uh, anti-air to try and deter jet fire and blades because they were, yeah. you know, if you had this base setup where you had important stuff around the headquarters, and it's like kind of like if you were whether you're setting up a backdoor attack or whatever, and you know, blades or jet fire would soften the top up. You'd see a lot of anti-air in that middle to top section, and like on my last base, personally, I had I had I had four max GM AAs, so there was like pretty much impossible for jets to hit that back. But when we're talking counters, I'm I'm wanting people to try and use the air, and if they go all ground, I got four weapons that do nothing. So that's that's a trade-off, right? That's what we're trying to uh, about yeah, def- yeah. about defense, about choices, and like, what do you want to defend against? And you know, and, and people have to think about that. So at the end of the day, Jet Force you know, Sky Strike, it's great that he goes invisible, but he's not delivering the punch that people want from an offense point of view. And I don't think it offsets enough to to warrant a shuttle spot. So yeah, high situational is is more than yeah. where where he needs to. be. Well, the question you got to ask is, would you put this guy in your team ahead of any of these guys? No. I wouldn't choose a single one. No. So, that for me says it all, really. Mm-hmm. Is that I was looking through thinking that all these bots here are good, and I, all these would go... Even Swoop, who I don't really rate, would go above him. Does it... I mean, so, is it hard because we're a bit spoilt for choice at our level two that we've maybe. pretty much... We've got all these guys, you know, and I think it can come across a bit bias that you know hey well it, he wouldn't make the team over any of the people sitting in the good section but if that's well, all we had if this guy did the same damage as jet fire he'd be in good because he's yes i've always said that the new content should be a lot better than old content and that's the benchmark for me that yeah when a new bot comes out you're like okay how is this better than the bot that i've already got it's got to be better you know, and this guy for me, yeah, he goes invisible, but his damage was still lacking. I know you said it's a trade-off, but why? You know, Jetfire is not godly, he's not overpowered, so why not have that bot that is the same damage as Jetfire, but then protects against AA? You might say it is overpowered, maybe. But, um, you know, it just gives an advantage for that newer bot, and um, it didn't get that, sadly. And uh, that damage is obviously no. really important, so... Uh, so, next yeah. two bots. So I've campaigned for this guy a lot, as you've probably seen. I don't remember him testing uh, a while back when we were doing some um, SA11 for him. Power Glider Cyclonus. So I complained in playtest saying uh, they need a buff. They need improving. And uh, I think it was Fabian said, well, what's the problem? I think it was Dale as well, maybe. And I said, the problem is that he curves his ability and sometimes misses targets. Uh, you yep. need to be able to you know, hit the target, just make him go on a straight run. So rather than curving, make it go on a straight run and do damage in a line. I said also, I said it's misleading. It said it does like 15,000 damage, but that's split between like eight bombs. So really, it yep. only does about three or four damage to a target. It's misleading. So they changed the description and then made it so you didn't have to target a defense. But I was like, that's still just, not fixing it. That You need yeah. to increase the damage and change the way it, it works. And they basically were like, no, that's not going to happen. And uh, I sort of learnt then that it's not going to change, sadly. And it's a shame because he could be so good as a cleanup bot. But I think the problem that he's misleading in his damage and inconsistent brings him maybe even down here. Is that yeah. being too harsh? No, no, because he's not. No one's using him. I mean, I, I, he's not even on a metal team for me, so he's not super yeah. high level. There's not a lot of spark involved. And regarding that curve, I, I had the same concern when it came to uh, Jetfire SA11 
yes. when they were doing doing that off the wing damage, and it was just yep. like off the right side, and go in a circle. I'm like, yeah, but what's that yep. going to hit? No, you like, don't know. There's no guarantee. That, you're spending one million spark and 750 ZE for that. Like, what is that? You well, know, so say, I've I've given him 11 for the extra damage at just a one target. Well, yeah, but not that's, because the actual yeah. ability is 11, just because of damage and increase yeah. to the target. But you've got to think that bots like Ultra Magnus does inconsistent damage. Sunstreaker, mm. inconsistent damage. Jetfire, uh, sorry, Power Glide, inconsistent yeah. damage. And all these bots we rated low in every single video we did because of that yeah. inconsistency. Yeah, I think. Yeah. There's no consistency there. You want to be able to do something yeah. and go, I know what I'm hitting. I know what I'm going to do. And... Um, these bots are lacking in that, and that's why they need some improvement. They are. Uh, Tigerhawk and Waspinator. So I'm going to ask you first uh, what you think. I'm going to get my thoughts after this. Uh, where would you place this guy? Situational. <laughs> that's interesting. So, uh, yeah, go on. Why, why situational, Tigerhawk and Waspinator? Uh, I, I see him as just a defense-only kind of bot and not even a spy good one okay well then much, when i put this to you that the fact that he does more damage than swoop mm. and he adds, adds in the obviously thunderstorms that it does so why is he not above swoop because I, I agree situational yeah but, I've never used Tiger Hub, but why is he not above swoop then that's the big question i i don't know if obviously a lot of people had swoop although they did a lot of people had swoop before tiger hawk came into it and then mm. all these Beast Ward characters came into it. But um, I think they don't want to invest in a similar bot, if I'm pretty so spot on. So is this a case of us, again, being spoiled? And is it a case of this, like Beast Wars Silver Bolt, that it probably is up there? Because if you had a choice between leveling Swoop as a four-star or Tigerhawk four-star from zero right now, you're yeah. probably better choosing Tigerhawk. Yeah. For sure, and this guy doesn't have SA eleven yet either. So yeah, true. Or, like a or a five star. Five star. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. we could. It's hard because you could say let's judge everything off the four star version, but obviously mm. it's hard to sort of judge that really when you've got five stars in the game. It's almost impossible because you're always influenced by that factor that there is a five star with that out there. Um, yeah, but yeah. There's a five star Tigerhawk like, in the China uh, server, and I, yeah. I don't know. I'm baffled. I don't really use the guy, but I'm tempted to put him there. For that reason. I think I think you, I, but I think you're spot on though. I think we're just we're spoiled for choice, and essentially, swoop ticks enough boxes that I'm not going to invest in a four star tiger hawk, especially when I've got both a four and a five star swoop available. Yeah? yeah. So I think I think people are just put off by that factor, and this one just falls under the radar of people not knowing what a max stats are on a tiger hawk. Um, yeah, I think overall we're spoiled for choice and people just don't want to level up the same similar bot yeah. for a tiny bit extra stats. It's just yeah. I wouldn't remember, I wouldn't do it either myself. Um, yeah, it's just not worth it. He's I just come out too looked, late. It was like and... maybe one or 2,000 extra damage over the whole ability. So I think what we're saying there is that if you've got Swoop already leveled, maybe not consider Tiger Hawk. It's not really, you know, it's quite costly as well. Same as Swoop. So it's not a good combo. Maybe at one use, yes. Um, but if you haven't got Swoop and you're a new player in the game, then yeah, it's a good bot to invest in. Maybe over Swoop. Yeah. So. Uh, next, we've got uh, Firefly and Blastoff. So, I mean, very much like Jetfire. Slightly less damage. Mm. Maybe a better SA-11 than Jetfire. Do you agree? Yeah, I would. I, I think his SA-11 is a, a little bit more... To the point of doing that extra damage uh, versus something that flies off the wing in a circle, yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah, that people either have one or the other. Uh, they they're not going to run both of them on the yeah. same team. Um, so it depends on what you got in a four or five star and who you really took to SA eleven first. And yeah, yeah, just all, all around good solid flyer. Same level as uh, Jetfire. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good point. Similar to the Swoop and Tigerhawk debate, that if you've already got Jetfire, then I wouldn't really invest in Firefly. I know people will run, will run two jets sometimes, but again, depends on your level. If you're on Cybertron and below, having two jets that can take out MDS and take out beam lasers for 
less cost yeah. because you're using two bots rather than one. So you're reducing the mm -hmm. cost. Then maybe, um, but too similar to the sake of, you know, um, yeah. Swoop and Tigerhawk. If you've already got Firefly, investing into 11, especially the five star, yeah, yeah brilliant. Wouldn't really bother with Jetfire. But same as, if you've already got Jetfire, maybe taking to 11 for the extra damage, I wouldn't really invest in Firefly. So, yeah, mm -hmm. very similar in that sense. You, you know, it's funny. I, I'm seeing the trend here when we've looked at, we've done all the other classes so far. There's not many not not great bots in the air class. Well, we'll talk a bit about that at the end. And yeah, but yeah, true. Um, and then we've got tracks and cutthroat. Now, this is a interesting discussion. This one, and <laughs> this guy would have been up here before the FFD. Yeah. Force field disruptor cores. I need to explain that because I get a lot of questions saying, "What does FFD mean?" So, force field disruptor mm. cores. So, um, so where would you place him now? Is he still godly? Is he g good? Is he situational now? What do you think? I look. He's still. He's still good. I'm. It's. It's the same category as blades. Take out the blue blood. Lower end. Higher good. end are good. No, yeah, high end. So. Because, because his ability is not changing. He's as a bot. He is how you know him. Just with a build bot. Take it out, and it's the yeah. same guy. Exactly, yeah, my exact same sentiment. That, you know, take that build bot out. He works as intended. Obviously, taking that build bot out increases the yeah. cost of your attack, but his strategy, again, you know, for the cost, two ability yeah. points. His first use is amazing, um, and like I said, I like the fact that he's not godly anymore. You know, we've talked about blades and talked about tracks that they were up here in the rafters. They were crazily overpowered godly. And now these cores have come in and they're still good. You know, we agree that they're not situational, not, gr not great. That's not the idea behind it. The idea behind it is to have them good and not godly and overpowered. They get to yeah. godly, it gets a bit silly sometimes. And yeah, I think it's well balanced. I, I, think, I think a lot of the people also need to realize it's not as easy to balance a bot from god or situation not great and put it into the good section on a regular basis i think it's it's just not easy like it's easy to throw numbers out it or you know try and design counters for it without creating other bugs but it's just not a simple process and, and people just need to understand that that we're trying to make the game go on longer um but just the more bots that are in the good section it's better for the health of the game you know, let the game evolve. Whether you go in upper HQ or you know, there might be a defense counter, put, but it's something that you just got to work around. It doesn't change the bot that you own, just maybe how you use it, and that's how Trax is. You can't, you may, you can't just lay him down at the start. You might have to use your Jetfire or Firefly and pick off a, a build bot. That's okay. Do that. And uh, last, I was going to say last but not least, but um, we've got <laughs> Cosmos and Mindwipe. So I've the, never the used this kind of attack, ever. I've thought about putting him in Outpost to stop people cup the in, like a bit of trolling, <laughs> but that's it. I, I, was I, about mean... to, I was about to say, he only comes out on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. He's a, a weekend party animal. But, um, where would you place this guy then? Uh, just not... Not great. I. Yeah. <laughs> the crazy part is, it's such a, it's the longest duration of hack. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's so long. Yeah. But... Again, you look at his, I look at his stats and go, it's actually not that bad. It's actually pretty good. And yeah. then I come to my senses. I give myself a bit of a slap and go, no, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't be silly. He's awful. Um. But yeah, it's a bit, again, it's a bit one of those like cliff jumpers where you look at it on paper and you go, yeah, this guy is really, this guy is like up here. This guy's godly, you know? Yeah. And then you try it and you're like, no, he's, he's not. No. It's a bit of a weird <laughs> one. But, um, it yeah, is. I agree. And then the, well, the fact that he came out with an SA-11 too, I thought I thought that was the apes trolling. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. who's, who's even taken a... One to level ten or nine, you know. So, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a laughable character, unfortunately. But you know what? He's not a big name either, so I don't think people are too worried. They just know him as the, the person who annoys them on a weekend. So <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's all the uh, bots rated. I'm quite happy with that. I, mean, I think this says a lot because looking at previous videos, um, we've got a lot of air cut in the good section. 
No. Yeah. And, uh, I think it says that, you know, if you pull an air class bot, chances are you're going to get a good bot for your team. Whether it's a four star or a five star, regardless, the meta might change. If they increase air defense in some way, then that might change. But is that a reason? Because air defenses aren't prominent in the game. And so that's why none of them really are situational. Because let's be honest, we're talking yeah, about. Uh, this guy having low damage, this guy having low damage, this guy not being that useful, inconsistent low damage, high cost, low damage. So we're talking that if it's an air class bot and has high damage or is a low cost, then it's generally pretty good. That's sort yeah. of what we're seeing here. But yeah, and I, think I, I, said I, I said, I said, I think because it ties into having a perk locked at level 10 in the, in the tree kind of says that the apes value the jets pretty well and i think they're well balanced and they just don't need that helping hand right now or even for a while like i think tier 10 doesn't unlock for another 22 weeks fyi so um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so look road. it's a very long road for that but yeah overall the jet class is a very good batch of bots yeah i agree well, yeah, like I said, that's every uh, bot rate. And like, again, as always, let us know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Is there a bot you use that uh, you think should be higher up in the table? What league are you warring in to use that bot? Uh, let us know. Like I said, me and uh, Tex obviously war at a very high level, so we're not privy to those uh, lower levels. So, um, yeah, if you use a bot a certain way in a certain league and it works well for you, then fair enough. But uh, let us know in the comments and, uh, yeah, maybe we can uh, have a look at it. Especially for Texas training room. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate it. And like I said, don't forget to go and check out our uh, other videos where we've done the special class. We've done the warrior class, gunner class, air class. We've got plenty more of these in the series coming. We've got a playlist going together, which has got all these uh, in. So you can literally binge them all. And uh, so you can uh, see which bots you've got, which ones are worth investing in and uh, which ones aren't. And that's to be honest, that's the aim of these videos. So we can educate people on, uh, you know, bots that may be worth investing in and bots that aren't, sadly. Yeah. But as always, thanks to Tex for joining me again. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, mate. And uh, I'll see you again for the next video. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And peace out.